One of the problems, of course, that people have with all of this anyway, is that they say, well, that all may be fair enough for as long as I'm alive, but then I'm going to die like everybody else sometime or other. And what happens then? And it's very common, of course, for people to believe or to say they believe, which often is more accurate, um, that when they die, that's the end of them. That's the end. Uh, some people uh, take the view, well, you know, people have talked about what happens um, after death for thousands of years and still there's no answer. But Buddhist perspective is somewhat different from this. Let's say, why don't you find out for yourself? I don't mean by that you have to die first. That would perhaps be rather counterproductive. Um, but if you experience in the immediacy of the moment, that is as a direct experience, what the nature of your experience, what the nature of your being actually is, then the problem of life and death is solved for you. Because the nature of awareness is something which doesn't change. Unlike the, if you like, the temporary or projected ego, which turns out to be a falsity, uh, the na true nature of awareness, the true self, if you like, never changes. Uh, it uh, never goes through um, a process of distortion, changing from one thing into something else. So in the immediacy, you can see the nature of awareness, it is true beyond conceptual thought. But when people ask, you know, what is the, uh, uh, what's going to happen after I die, that's all a question to do with conceptual thought and thinking and processes of that kind. You need to step beyond that. If you want to see what the nature of life and death is, you have to stop, step beyond those kind of concepts. And you have to rely on direct experience, not on concepts and notions. But to rely on direct perception, direct experience, means you have to train and allow the things that get in the way of that direct experience to collapse. Fortunately, you don't have to create direct experience. That would be mad. You know, direct experience is just there. The problem is not so much having to create something that already exists, but the fact that uh, there is an eclipse of what already exists by a quali some quality of confusion. And what you have to do is not to create direct awareness, um, but to dissolve the confusion. And then everything you wanted to know about the nature of your experience or about the nature of life and death would appear to you. For if you don't know, nobody knows. Everything, and when it comes down to it, is down to you. You're the one who can know all that is needed to be known about the nature of experience, uh, about the nature of being. Without your knowledge, there is no knowledge because that knowledge reflects back onto you. I don't mean from an egocentric point of view, because in a sense we've already shot that down, you might say. But it has to be an awareness and a knowing which is beyond concepts. And everybody has that potential. It's just we don't trust it. And we let ourselves be seduced by concepts, emotions, notions of various kinds. Everything that we want is in the palm of our hands. Um, there's a saying in Buddhism, um, Buddha, Buddha is in the palm of your hand. It's directly before you, directly experienced by you. You don't need to go anywhere else for it. You do not need to uh, 
go to some wise man up a mountain somewhere to tell you what the nature of truth is. You don't need to go to some greatly organized religious system, whether it's Buddhist, Christian, or anything else, to find out the truth. If you can't find it out, it's useless. The only thing that teachers are useful for is not so much telling you what the nature of reality is, but simply to tell you how to train to see it for yourself. And that's what the Buddha's Dharma, the Buddha's way, uh, was all about. That's the way he instituted it. That's the way it's always been up to now. And that's the way it is now. And it's open um, to you to practice and understand it now as it was in the past. Thank you.